So how did we live as a low income family while paying off debt? The time when we were started paying off our debt, it was my husband and I, and we had just had a new baby and our annual take home pay that year was $38,000. The state income limits for HUD and other resources would consider, let me see, for three people, 39,950 to be low income. And we were below that. So everything's relative. Some people might think, well, $38,000 is more than I make. That's a lot of money. And some people would be like, oh my gosh, I couldn't put gas in my car and buy groceries for that. So it's all relative, all based on where you live. Take on pay those first couple of years, $735 a week, which actually makes that, hold on, $38,220. Keep in mind, we live in a low cost of living area. And again, that was take home pay. For context, we live in South Alabama near Mobile in a pretty low cost of living area. And we moved from Atlanta thereabouts to where we are now when my baby was six weeks old. So my husband could take this job. I quit my job, obviously, and became a stay at home mom at the time. And then I started a business a few months later where I made a few hundred dollars a month that also went to paying off our debt. So for context, we brought home, okay, so 735, oops, $735 a week. So my husband's monthly pay was about $3,185 at the time. And we decided that we were going to try to live on about half of that and throw the rest of debt. We ended up going a little bit over half. And so our living expenses for the month were $1,700. That included everything. And then that meant that we had about $1,485 a month to pay off our debt. And then anything extra, which if you multiply that by 24, which is how much, it, how much time it took, it was $35,640. Our debt was a little bit more than $36,000. So anything extra that I made went towards our debt or into savings. So this is how that $1,700 a month broke down. So the first thing that we did was we found the cheapest house that we could rent. At the time we had two dogs and a newborn baby and we didn't really wanna do an apartment. Looking back now, we probably could have made it work and done an efficiency apartment that had utilities included and it would have been cheaper. I didn't know at the time that we qualified, to be honest with you. I actually have fond memories of that house. I drove past it uh, last week. And every time I drive past it, my two older boys yell, that's our old house. Even though I know neither one of them remember living there. We moved out when my oldest had just turned three. But that's the house where my oldest son took his first steps. That's the house where my we brought my youngest, my second son home from the hospital that's the house where we got out of debt and we did a lot of dreaming in that sweet little brick farmhouse it was not our ideal living situation it was better than a lot of people's living situations right like it was still a safe house in a safe area we had a good landlord who was kind to us uh, and we had stability and having stability and safety if you have stability and safety you're better off than the majority of the population of the world, right? I feel like that's something we forget that I have to remind myself of all the time. If I have stability and safety, I am better off than most people in the world. Half of that $1,700 was our rent of $850 a month. So we did $50 a week in groceries. So that would be $200. And we did a little $50 a month cell phone plan. Internet was about $55. We had a well at the time, praise the Lord. So we did not have to pay for water, but we did have to pay for electricity, which was on average $300 a month. But that house is very old, very old. $245 left over for things like gas, diapers, incidentals, like going to the doctor, getting haircut. I also cloth diapered my oldest. So when people ask me today about cloth diapering to save money or why don't you cloth diaper, I did until my oldest was two. And then I had a six month old baby at the time because my baby, my oldest were 18 months apart and I hated it hated every second of it. I would cry while I stripped diapers. It was the worst. I 
would not do it again. I know people who love cloth diapering. Good for you, boo. And you keep doing it. You keep doing it. And if you want a cloth diaper research, there are a lot of positive things that you can read about it. A lot of a lot of good information, a lot of people who can help you. I'm not, I don't want to discourage you. I'm just telling you from my experience, it was awful and I wouldn't do it again to save my life. Another thing that we were able to take advantage of is the fact that my husband drove a company vehicle and they paid for his gas. So that was a huge expense that we didn't have to pay. So we only had to have like basic liability on his truck that we were just holding on to. Well, we were still paying it off. That's why we were holding on to it. And then I had my car that we had insurance on, but we weren't having to pay the expenses to drive to back and forth to work for him. I think people forget, and something that working from home has reminded people of, is that the act of actually going to work is expensive. You have to pay for gas back and forth. You have separate clothes that you have to wear to your job. There are expenses that go along with having a job. And some of those expenses we just did not have to pay for because my husband's company paid for him because of the nature of his job. And then everything else, the rest of the $1,400 went towards our debt. So the one car payment that we had at the time, student loans and credit cards and some medical bills, all of it went towards that. And to put things into perspective, so living off $1,700 a month sounds like very limited. Like some of you are listening to this saying that wouldn't even cover my rent. Again, where you live makes a huge difference. But here are some of the things that we did. When we first moved in, we were still under a satellite dish contract that we could not get out of. <laughs> and they were like, no problem. We'll move your dish for free. So for the first six months, we did have to pay that. And then once it was done, we canceled it. And we had Netflix. So add, I think Netflix at the time was like $8 a month. And then any other entertainment we got was a Redbox movie, a movie that we rented or checked out from the library. Our library had a very good selection of movies. Or we would ask for gift cards at Christmas so that we could rent movies like on Amazon or iTunes. People still rent movies on iTunes. I just remember when Riles was a baby, somebody giving us a $50 iTunes gift card for Christmas, and that's what we used it for, was to rent movies. I cooked from home all of the time. My husband took his own lunch all of the time. We cooked very simple meals based on what was on sale. I would walk to the farmer's market that's in the middle of our, our old town, and I would pick stuff up there. And I could also walk to the library, baby in the stroller. And when he got a little bit older, I would pull him in a little wagon through town. I remember splurging once to go get a haircut and in a, that feeling like, oh, you got a haircut. Like a big freaking deal. Um, one time my husband got me at Christmas when I was pregnant with our second baby. My husband got me a gift card to go get a pedicure. And that made me feel like the Queen of England at the time. I remember when my son was, so he was born in November, uh, April, it was April when we went on our first like date where we left him with my mom and we went and watched the Hunger Games movie and he would not take a bottle and scream the whole time. So that, that did not work. <laughs> I learned how to shop my sales flyer because I knew I have $50 a week to buy everything that I need and I'm going to learn to make this work. So I did a lot of cooking from scratch, a lot of like, I'll make a roast and we will have roast. And then the next night we will have tacos made out of roast and then we will have sandwich made out of roast and then we will have salad. I remember one time we got a Boston butt and cooked it. And by the end of the week, my husband was like, I can't, I can't look at it anymore. Please, please stop. I learned to make pizza crust. I learned how to make Olive Garden breadsticks. I didn't really learn how to make Olive Garden breadsticks. I learned how to make something that I called Olive Garden breadsticks, but it just tasted like an eraser made out of flour. It was disgusting, but my husband ate it because he's a sweet man. But we did a lot of at-home date nights. So I remember um, going to Target with some coupons and having a huge list of stuff that was on sale, including a bag of frozen shrimp and cooking it one night for dinner, mango salsa and watching a movie movie, and my husband was like, you paid how much for that? That was so good, that was so cheap. How did you do that? Getting out coupons felt like I was stealing, like I was printing money from my printer when I wasn't. I feel like some of those coupon deals are coming back. I feel like we're gonna see a return of 
the extreme couponing. And we did go out to eat. It was usually for someone's birthday. So I very, I remember going out to eat for my birthday, my husband's birthday, and then my mother-in-law's birthday. Yeah, because I remember being very pregnant with Isaac. My mother-in-law's birthday is in March. I was doing May. My 18-month-old at the time, not 16-month-old at the time, kept throwing stuff on the floor because he thought it was funny, and I was having a hard time bending over to pick it up. I know this life of extreme frugality isn't going to work for everyone. I know that we are fortunate because of where we live that we were able to find a safe residence and not pay thousands, literal thousands of dollars a month. And that house where we live is actually an anomaly. Most of the rent in comparison to the income of where we live is skewed and it's too high. I realized that what we were able to accomplish is not doable for everyone based on limitations based on access to affordable housing, based on your location. I get that. But this is my story and I'm always happy to share it with you. Your story will be different in a lot of ways. And I hope that you will one day share your story of getting out of debt with someone and inspire them because that's, that's how we learn from real people sharing their experiences and not personalities who are so far removed from the equation, they don't remember what it was like to go through those tough moments. I will say when I had my oldest son, we were still living in Georgia. I was still working. We were very much in debt and my insurance was awful. And my hospital bill ended up being $11,000. I knew it was going to be high. I saved up my entire pregnancy for it. And I knew if I asked, they would give me a discount. And so I ended up getting a discount and paying $8,000 out of pocket to have him. And just the difference when we moved down here for my husband's job, the insurance, I ended up paying, I think $250 to have my second baby. And just that stark contrast of, okay, already we're seeing life improvements, even though we're, we're doing all, all, all of these things and sacrificing and trying to live on less, our life has gotten better. Like this move was a good thing, even though I still to this day do not enjoy living in the state of Alabama. We were able to take advantage of my husband having better insurance and better benefits. And a lot of people do not have that. And I did start bringing in an income. So when I was pregnant with my second we were able to like back up a little bit and not put every single penny that we made toward our debt because I was bringing in more of an income. I started my VA business. I was doing social media management for people. I was bringing in a steady income. It wasn't huge, but it was steady and I enjoyed the work. In fact, I have a picture of my husband and I at the hospital. My laptop's open his laptop is open, he's working and I'm working. And it was such an easy delivery that I worked up until the point when they were like, time to push. Oh, okay. Let's have a baby signing off for maternity leave. Um, I did, We, when I was pregnant with my second baby, I was very sick. Um, I had hyperemesis gravidorum and I had to be hospitalized at one point. And because I was so sick, I started to go into preterm labor. And I remember being afraid of how much the hospital bill was and then getting one. And it wasn't that much. Like, it was a lot, but it wasn't the $11,000 that I was afraid it was going to be. It was like $250. And having this money that I could just dip into that little emergency fund that we had and pay it. And just that already feeling a sense of relief. We started off with a thousand dollars emergency fund, realized we weren't comfortable with that, and then worked our way up to two months' expenses. Emergency fund sizes are personal. I also remember at the time I was really into swag bucks. Is that still around? Swag bucks still around? I think it's still around. I think I may have some swag bucks I need to use. Um, but what you would do is I would use it as a search engine. And when you would use it as a search engine, you would accrue points. And then I would use those points to get like a Panera gift card so that after church, we could go to Panera for lunch. And that felt so fancy. Our Panera has closed. I tried to go there the other day and get a chai tea and it is no longer open. Okay, so that's it. I've rambled on for a very long time, but I would love to know, have you ever been in the situation where you were just trying to muddle through and you were living on 
Okay, so that's it. I would love to know your thoughts. Or are you in a similar situation or have you been either by necessity or living this way so that you could pay off debt? Leave me a comment below. Thank you for being here and I'll see you soon.